Hey everybody, it's Wellens, and welcome back to Life is Strange True Colors. I know it's been a few months since I finished playing it the first time around, but I really did want to get to that second playthrough, as I do with all the Life is Strange games, basically. And, uh, so here we are. Last time in my first playthrough, I romanced Steph, and I, I guess I got the, the support of most people. Oh, spoilers for the, the whole game, I guess. Yeah, so this time I'd like to see what the Ryan romance looks like, and also some of the other alternate different choices that I could have made. We did pretty good the first time around, I think, so I guess this time we can see how bad things can get. I'm gonna be truncating this playthrough down primarily to just the differences between this playthrough and my last playthrough, so here we go! What's the protocol for reuniting with your long-lost sister after eight years? I'm not much of a hugger, but I'm really glad to see you. Oh, very professional. We're excited to have you aboard, Miss Chen. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here, sir. I can't believe you're here. Believe it. Kind of makes sense. She's very guarded. She's all grown up, and I missed it. I'm a lot taller, huh? Yeah, yeah. Time will do that to you. Are you ready to see the town? Yeah. I'm just a little nervous. You should be. This reunion's being filmed. <laughs> <laughs> What's your greatest weakness? Uh, what? It's for a college interview. We've been debating this one for days. Gabe insists that I give an honest answer. It's always better to give an honest answer. And what's the alternative? Lying? Not lying, more like strategic half-truthing. Like, I work too hard or I save too many puppies. They could smell that bullshit a mile away. I've been trying to warn her. Oh yeah? What would you do? I would be honest. It's usually harder, but then you come off as more authentic. Called it! Wow. You two are already wonder-twinning your way through town. Seems that way. <laughs> Alex, help me out real quick. What do I get for Charlotte? Sunflowers are her favorite, but I read online that Lily of the Valley is great for saying sorry. What do you think? Ignore what she wants and just do whatever you want, obviously. What, uh, exactly are you apologizing for? This time around? Maybe the toilet seat? <laughs> Go with the white bouquet. If you're trying to say sorry... That I am. And that I will. Does that actually change things? I guess the lilies were okay. World's okay as boyfriend, gah. You were right regarding the lilies. Feel like I'll get used to saying that with you. Really? So this doesn't really mean anything then, right? Because both flowers seem to work okay. Although Charlotte doesn't look that happy here. <laughs> the faces, the heads look a little bit photoshopped. I mean, it's not even a real photo to begin with, but eh. Gabe and I used to listen to records together all the time. We'd forget about the world and rock out for hours. You gotta tell me what Gabe was like as a kid. Any ammunition you can give me? Actually, he was a pretty badass older brother. He smoked cigarettes, which at the time I thought was awesome. And he somehow managed to get his first tattoo when he was 12. Wait, there was an age limit on tattoos? Damn. Or age the minimum? legend only grows. <laughs> All right, you're looking at 20 even. No, no way. I can't believe you're doing this no. again. 
come on. Do you have any idea how much time I've put into this? You just... No, dude, I can't come over there. I'm working. Oh. It's called a job. Maybe you'd understand if you ever had... I can watch the booth if you gotta get out of here. Hey, hold, hold on a sec. Are you serious? We have a playlist, right? I think I can handle that. You're a lifesaver. Oh, no bird calls, though. I'll be there, one sec. <sighs> Organizing a LARP shouldn't be this hard. Okay. Honestly, even on second watch, I feel like this scene... Like, this feels very natural as a prelude to a Ryan romance. And I know it's not like Steph was trying to spread her anger on purpose or anything, but just looking at the scene in isolation... And I know Life is Strange players tend to have a leaning towards the female love interest all the time, but just this scene alone, I feel like Ryan's winning here. And then also later on, we know that Ryan has the other scene. Mom says I'm supposed to stay at the Lantern until she gets off work. But I kind of want to hang out at home. Is that okay? Do you, man. <laughs> but I'm going to check that homework later tonight, though. Better be done, Capiche. Capiche, good to meet you. Yeah, same. See you around. We trust each other. He tells me stuff he doesn't even tell Char. Ethan didn't tell Gabe about going to explore the old mine. He trusted me to keep his secret. Should I? Or should I blow his cover? We will keep Ethan's secret. You good? Yeah, fine. Just thinking about you as the Hobbs to Ethan's Calvin. Exactly! That's exactly what it's like! Except you're, you know, dating his mom. <laughs> Clearly you haven't read my Calvin and Hobbes fan fiction. <laughs> wow. What? Oh my god. Wow, this scene is really weird without the licensed music. <laughs> or any music, really. You know, I really appreciate that games these days more and more often. This is a tangent entirely, but uh, I really appreciate that they add streamer modes or, you know, turning off the licensed music. But in scenes where music is part of the scene, I feel like they got to find a different solution because this is not... No. <laughs> I'm not going to bother adding music here. Let's just see how weird this is. Oh yeah, go get him, bro. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Lifetime of practice. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is just like Guardians of the Galaxy. Your turn. Specific scenes where they reference music. Or music is in the scene. It's gotta, it's gotta have some music, okay? Just put in the game soundtrack, something. Yeah, that's all you. <sighs> Stop! Oh my god. I love that. It's a falling star? Yeah. Or rising. Depends on the day, I guess. So, what's it doing today? <laughs> falling pretty damn hard. Yeah. I mean, I guess. But it's amazing to be here. So I'm short-staffed at the moment. Gabe tells me you've worked at a restaurant before. Couple years experience as a server? Uh... 
No, sorry. Gabe's full of shit. I've never worked in a restaurant before. Never stops that one. But I would love the work, if experience isn't an issue. Want to give it a try? It's not too busy right now, and we keep it informal around here. Okay. Thanks. All right. So, we have a few folks that need checking on. Ducky and Diane over there. Okay, Step coming clean here. is probably an okay impression to make, as opposed There's to lying about it. Clearing also. I mean, either way, I don't think it actually changes anything. anything. Do we really care if Jed likes right. us? I don't think so. Holy shit. Can I talk to you real quick? No. No way. Come on, please. Listen, what happened upstairs was fucked up, right? From both of us. It's trying to drag me into it. That is bullshit. And you know it. I was defending Gabe from you. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Look, Riley's headed over here. She's pretty heated. I, I don't think it helps to recap all the gory details, you know? You're so dumb though, Mac. If you if your little fake cover-up story didn't involve lying about Gabe right in front of me, I probably would have gone with it. If you had just glossed over the details or something. You really are a piece of shit. Look, she's gonna break up with me otherwise. We've been together four years. She is the best thing that's ever happened to me. So please, help me out. You're probably the worst thing that's ever happened to her. I don't know, man. Shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh my god, look at your face. No, it's okay. Okay. So how did the fight happen? The bastard sucker punched me. Okay. Um, not exactly sucker punched, but he definitely started it. Oh god, were you there too? Can you just do a better story that doesn't involve such a blatant lie? Good lord. Yeah, I was there, but um, I need to get back to work. Okay. Hmm. Sure. Alex, we'll, uh, we'll get out of your way. I can't believe you two. It sounds so childish. I know. I'm sorry. I just get so worked up thinking of you with him. Doesn't outright deny his lies. Can I get you anything? Oh, yeah. We're super hungry. I'd love a pie special with fries. Cheeseburger with mushrooms and my usual to drink. Jed will know what to do. All right, I'll go put that order in. Thanks. Okay, it's if we mess it up, there's My dad was I'm new. Service. I'm new at this. You can't fault me. Hey, Dad. Yeah. I've got an order from Ducky and Diane. Go ahead. <laughs> I actually don't remember. One burger with mushrooms. Uh-huh. And Oh my god. Okay. Crap. Sorry. I think I've forgotten the order. That's all right. I'll take care of it. Ducky asked for his usual? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he's fond of a particular rye whiskey. I keep a personal bottle for him. Okay, so Jed didn't get mad. Oh, that's odd. I don't see it. Oh, now wait. I bet Ducky took that bottle upstairs last night. Yeah, he and Gabe went on carousing long after closing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Serves him right if you ask me, but feel free to go upstairs and look for it. I'm sure he'd be grateful. 
Oh, Deputy Pike was with them and might have some idea. If you still trust him after that prank. Oh. Sorry, Ducky, you're not getting your drink today. But uh, if we lied and then we forgot the order, because if we have a lot of experience and we shouldn't be forgetting the order, right? Then Jed might get mad. But right now he's okay because we admitted freely to him that, okay, we, we are new at this, so it's, it's fine. Hey, Alex. Were you hanging out with Ducky and Gabe last night? Who told? <laughs> <laughs> so, Ducky apparently lost his favorite whiskey. Possibly upstairs? Oh, no. You remember seeing him with it? No, when I left, he was still down here. Oh, but you know what? You should check Gabe's wall of shame. Might have some incriminating evidence. <laughs> okay, thanks. I will. Ah, oh, hadn't seen this before. But sorry, Ducky, you're still not getting the drink this time. Ducky? Jed thinks you took your whiskey up to Gabe's yesterday. Do you know where you might have left it? <sighs> I remember absolutely nothing of the night. <laughs> really? Maybe check your phone. Did you take any pictures? Call anyone? <clears throat> have a look. Oh! For goodness sake. How do I access the photos on this thing? Oh no, it's an old person's smartphone. Oh god. Well, I've never seen this before because I immediately found the wall of shame last time. That is a lot of mail! Guys, what the hell? Mesa. Uh, <laughs> duplicate copies. I think iPhone, this looks like an Android iPhones, I think, are easier for people not familiar with technology. Nice. <laughs> Ooh, nice thumb. Oh, it's a little bit cracked, too. Poor Ducky. I shouldn't be reading this. Oh my god, what? It has not been easy being your daughter. You cannot simply say you are lonely and expect that I will forget my first 20 years. I will... I will think about your request. The kids are all doing well. I have shown them a picture of you. Mabel McAllister. Ah. So later on, we learn more that Ducky is not just an entrepreneur. He was a CEO of some big company, but this is a hint that he doesn't have good relations with his family. Nothing, though. Sorry. Nothing useful. Well, thanks for letting me know. Is that your shot? What is that? This is bedazzled kiwi schnapps. No one's ever ordered it, so Gabe's trying to get rid of it with the jukebox game. What's a jukebox game? It's like a short version of 20 questions, where you're trying to guess a song, guess wrong, you have to take the shot. <laughs> Ryan and I are going to play. You want to take his place? Dude, you're on. <laughs> yes. So, I'll pick a song. You have five yes or no questions before you have to guess it. Okay. So, what do you want to ask me? Hmm. I should flip through these and see what might be good to ask. <laughs> I didn't ask any personal questions the first time around because it's useless. So how long have you been a fan? So, I guess we're breaking the yes or no questions only rule? Yes, I'm hitting on you. Okay, how long have I been a fan? Maybe a year? Honestly, I just have a crush on the basis. <laughs> so now I know it's a band, and not a solo artist. Touche, Chen. It was this one, right? Let's get it wrong this time. Why do you like this song? The lyrics crack me up. Even the title's pretty goofy. Reminds me of fun times, I guess. Goofy title, you say? Hmm. Oh, you still get some relevant answers out of this one. When was the last time you listened to this song? Like two days ago. Gabe was working, so Shar and I put it on and danced like crazy to rub it in. That doesn't tell me anything. What did you expect? Is it that one? No, it's not. Sorry. All right. Glitter drink me. Free shot. 
It's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> How was it? Oh my god. <laughs> That's like corn syrup mixed with paint chips. <laughs> Hey, thanks for playing. I'm really glad we did. We need to talk. I'll be on the rooftop, okay? Okay. I think that's enough for today. We'll have to train you. You've got a lot to learn, if I'm honest. But that's just like your opinion, Jed. You can't what, keep cares an about you think? waiting. You better go upstairs. You know, when I pull you off the Mac, and you hit me, I, I was angry. Then I thought about how you took him apart. Like you've done it before. Kids in foster care fight a lot. I learned how to defend myself. I'd say. I can tell there's something going on with you. Something troubling you. Maybe it's time you open up. I want to talk to Gabe, but what can I even say right now to explain what happened with Mac? Nothing. Growing up in the system was hell. In my first foster home, an older boy followed me into the bathroom. So I pushed him out. Oh, God. He got angry. So did I. Then I broke his nose. I was 14. In the second home, one of the other kids committed suicide. And I couldn't eat for a month. After a couple of weeks in the fifth home, I got so depressed that my new parents sent me to a hospital. I never saw him again. The hurt follows me everywhere. The other kids get adopted, leave the system. Not me. They never picked me. Oh god, we never got to learn about this. I'm broken. Do you really believe that? Today I do. Socking your own brother in the jaw is one for the record books. I don't even feel it anymore. That's not the point. Look at you. You've got a home, a job, a girlfriend. You've got everything figured out. And I don't. He had a rough beforehand, too. He took a while to get here. I don't need a light. Just take it. What is this? A reminder. Looks like a match to me. That was the last matchbook I got when I was still in juvie. Did some pretty unsavory stuff to score it. And you still have it? Yeah. I carry it with me everywhere. When I got out, I went through the last few matches real quick. Obviously, but... 
I, I could never bring myself to use the last one. It reminded me how bad life got and how much better I was going to make it. Gabe, I can't accept this if it means so much to you. No, no, that's exactly why I want you to keep it. Little did he know. It's the only reason why he ended up being alive. When I found Haven and Charlotte, I couldn't believe they were real. Everything before was such hell. Now it's different. You can do the same. Start a new life. You made it out of the system, Alex. You survived. It's time to move on. It's not that simple. I've made so many mistakes. We all have. Survival isn't a neat and tidy process. But it's way better than the alternative. And don't forget, I'm here to help you. That's not going to change. You're wrong. Oh, hey, dude, what's up? Hey, is Ethan up here? No, he was heading home. He was, but I haven't seen him in a while. I told him not to wander off. I'll find him. Gabe, wait. Earlier, when I was talking with Ethan, he told me he was hiking up the mountains to explore the old mine. What? Why didn't you say something? I'm sorry. If he actually went up there, we need to move now. Okay, let's go. Look at Ryan. Ooh, that look Gabe shot me. Ryan diffusing the situation, seeing it get tense, and then he immediately changed the topic so that I wouldn't get yelled at. Oh. Ryan is very emotionally intelligent. <sighs> Here we go again. Still just as awful the second time around. Ryan... He had a split second to make a decision here. And he saved me. Yeah, maybe that's a better way of looking at it. It's not that he killed Gabe, it's that he saved me. Well, we mostly planted seeds for future deviations, but chapter one here, not too, nothing too crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know what happens at the end of chapter one, so whatever we do with Gabe doesn't really, it's not the biggest of issues, but choosing some other options did give us additional information about Alex's time in the foster home and all that, and <laughs> I guess Mac and Riley are together now, still, because she didn't break up with him, because... He lied his way through it. Which is awful, but eh. 3% <laughs> people shook Gabe's hand, my god. Yeah, encouraging Riley to be honest. I didn't give the sunglasses to the gnome. Didn't listen to the songs. Eh. 
pessimism. I express pessimism to Charlotte. Is that really gonna come into play here? Maybe, because Charlotte is um she's an artist, so she'll really pick up off other people's emotions and feelings. Okay. Jed was not impressed with Alex's performance as a server. One percent. Oh my god. Ah, so Jed figuring it out is if you lie, and then he realizes. But this one, I just, I just straight up said no, and then I sucked at it. So there you go. Riley and Mac are still together. There you go. Ducky's whiskey is still lost. Okay, let's see what happens in the next chapter. How about a quick match? Did Gabe tell you we played? Yeah. And he said he kicked your butt. <laughs> Asshole. I don't really think it's a great time. Fine. All right, we got to win this time. First to five points. If you say so. The full game. ASDF. So how often did you and Gabe play? It was one of our favorite games. You must be pretty good then. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Thanks for letting me win, Steph. You were in a band, right? Yeah. What'd you play? Drums. How, uh, how long did you play with them? <sighs> Too long. I'm trying to make her talk. Gotcha. Five points! That's game! Yep. Big shocker. Oh, hey, at least you played your best. <laughs> I mean, that obviously wasn't my best. No, I get it. I mean, this is a tough game. Requires skill, timing, and the will to be a champion. Oh, is that how it is? Okay, okay. Joking aside, playing this stupid game with you is exactly what I need right now. I like the other response better. You're on. The whole boo, Steph sucks, that one. <laughs> I'm actually trying this time, so oh you God. better focus. I am focusing. Good. Wouldn't want you to get distracted or anything. Certainly not. Shut up, Steph. That boo, Steph sucks thing was one of the points, one of the very first points in the game where I thought, wow, the motion capture. Greatest Northwest band of all time, go. Really Are you upgraded. Trying to distract me? Oh, of course not. Slater Kinney, if you were wondering. You never even got it to the other side, stuff. Woo! Shit. Oh, that's a win. I was actually trying that time. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 let's get serious. One more game, winner takes title of ultimate foosball champion. Mm, I don't know. Come on, you know Gabe would be all about us playing like this. Well, then it's settled. I know your tricks this time, Steph. You can't <laughs> fool me. This is it, for all the marbles. So many marbles. Definitely the kind of game you want to focus on, no matter what happens. Totally. Hey, so are you into girls or what? No, I'm not, Steph. Shut up. <laughs> I mostly dated guys before, actually. Oh, yeah? Do they listen to CDs of bird calls? Because I could hook you up. <laughs> Can't say I've ever dated a bird call enthusiast before. Oh, that's actually really sweet of stuff, even though she's probably interested in me too. This is what? How convinced were you that that was gonna work? From one to ten? <laughs> <laughs> like a three. Woo! 
Foosball oh. champion. Foosball champion. Kardashian <laughs> family. Oh. <laughs> Good game. Thanks, Alex. I'm really glad you talked me into it. It was a lot of fun. Of course. I should head back to work. Cool. You know, I just thought of something while watching this Steph scene again. Bye, Steph. I mean, bye, Steph. Bye. Strictly professional relationship. <laughs> no, come on. This is the Ryan playthrough. We can't be all hung up over Steph again. No, Gabe made that call. <laughs> So they made it seem like Steph and Alex... Well, Alex made Steph play the foosball and then she felt better, right? In my personal experience though, if I'm... Whenever I'm like really, really sad because of like something serious, like somebody passing away, how I feel is usually I feel like I get distracted when I'm playing the thing or whatever. But as soon as it's over, then I remember, oh yeah, like this happened and then I get sad again. Which, you know, that's just my personal experience, so it's not like it's universal or anything, but, um... Yeah, really sweet of stuff to say that, you know, Ryan might be a good match for me, even though... Even though she probably wishes that she was the person I was looking for. Have you talked to Ethan at all? Talked is maybe too strong a word. I tried. He's taking it really hard. But what you did for me this morning got me thinking. What if Ethan needs something like that too? Something fun and distracting. Something like a LARP. Like... Costumes, foam swords, that kind of thing? Yeah, but designed just for him and Thanor. Can we even pull that off? It won't be high production value, but it'll still be fun. I need your help, though. I want it to be as good as it can be. Ethan gave you one of his comics, right? So, what do you think? Who would the famous monster slayer have the most fun defeating? Gravius, Lord of the Underworld. Or Storm Rider, the Undead. Let's try Gravius today. Gravius looks pretty badass. Go with that. <laughs> All right, then. Oh, I gotta get back in there. There's some stuff in my comp book. It'd be cool if you could check it out. Help me make some calls. I'll see what I can do. Oh... Looks like Steph wants me to do more than just make some decisions. She wants me to play a bard. Guess I'm in. Let's start with my name. But first, a few announcements. The Spring Festival is just around the corner, sponsored by Typhon Mining Company. The mission is free this year, so bring your friends, bring your family. Hell, There's beauty and simplicity. Sure <laughs> this time. Ability time. Distortion field sounds fun, but healing serenade could really come in handy. Let's go with distortion field. How did I meet Thanor? It was a dark and stormy night. This LARP thing just might work. Thanor and I will make a great team. It was a dark and stormy night, but that didn't stop the townsfolk from gathering to make merry in the amphitheater. Under the roof, and with beer as a plenty, none noticed a beast lurking in the darkness. They didn't stand a chance. The beast attacked, killing all in its path. I fought bravely, but alas, I am a singer, not a fighter. Just as my strength failed, a brave warrior appeared, Thanor the Monster Slayer. Together, we fought off the beast and saved the town. Yeah, it's kind of kind of like a generic sort of heroic story, but you know, we'll give it a try. And we have Distortion Field today. That's more of a destructive spell, right? So that's gonna be fun. What is this? An affidavit. From Typhon. If I sign, I'm agreeing not to press charges. 
in exchange for a payment. A big one. That's so shady. Why would they be offering you money if they didn't do anything wrong? They say it's an offer of good faith. But you're right. He's dead because of them. And I'd be letting them off. Are you gonna sign it? I don't know. I'm trying to put Ethan first, but... What would you do? Do you think it would be a betrayal of Gabe? Retrospectively, we know that Charlotte does want to assign it. And it might be a big sum of money. But is she willing to give up our relationship for that? I don't think you should sign it. I'm sorry. I know it's hard. But you can't let Typhon buy you off. Gabe made that call. And I'm gonna prove it. I just... I need some time. Thanks for being honest. Her reaction says it all. If they're willing to pay Charlotte to keep quiet, they're definitely hiding something. I really- Of course, she's right. But I could really use that money. We can't give in, no matter how hard it is. That's a difficult spot to be in, to be caught between morals and practicality. It's really easy and nice to be, to pretend, no, I don't, shouldn't use the word pretend, but you know, to stand up for your beliefs. But realistically, that's going to put you in a much harder position on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So that's, um, you know, for example, what if you end up homeless because of this? And you knew that you could have just taken the money and not be homeless, and that, that's a huge decision. It's bullshit. We have a right to know what's happening to our jobs. You guys don't think anything's really gonna change, right? It's hard to say. Yeah, because they won't tell us a damn thing. I just still can't wrap my head around it. Someone died? It's a shit situation, but the least they could do is be upfront with us about our job security. Exactly. I just hope the council passes the vote. So, anyone seen Loudon? Not since his shift that night. Poor son of a bitch. <laughs> we should get him a beer sometime. I give Typhon eight years of my life, and they can't give me back one simple answer about my job. Typhon doesn't give a shit about anyone. Okay, so as we were entering the dispensary earlier, we ran into Diane. And she's just finished talking to the miners. I didn't pick up on this last time. I only still need to check the flower shop for Mac. Noticed in hindsight, but yeah, I think they wanted me to come check out what the miners were on about. Man, these overnight shifts really take it out of me. Yeah, my sleep schedule's fucked. Coffee in the morning, whiskey before bed. Works like a charm. So this guy's different from earlier then. He was angry, wasn't he? How would I know that? Fuck, now I'm on Diane's shit list. Thanks, Diane. Oh, so that's a pretty big hint that Diane was in on it. But I really have to say, like, the, the facial animation is so good in this that even when Diane was saying, Oh, condolences, Alex. Uh, I'm really sorry about your brother's loss. She had no ounce of sympathy on her face, even though the words were all there. So we were able to tell that even just by looking at her face already. Is Mac here? Oh, he was helping me not too long ago. I think he just left. Can't have gotten too far. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thanks. Now, what was I? Hmm. Hey, I can see your aura this time, Eleanor. Yeah, I think some of the bugs I saw before have been patched. Jed must be hosting some event. I wonder why he wants lilies, though. They're traditionally for funerals. 
God. She doesn't remember. Oh, God. This part is so miserable. I hate it. I really, really hate it. It just makes me think of so many... Oh, there's so many seniors in the world who don't... Who don't have kids or grandkids helping them. And it just feels like they're left all alone and... Oh. Ah. Uh. You know Jed. Probably doesn't know the difference between a lily and a tulip. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sell him short. He's more clever than he seems. She's gonna find out elsewhere. You can't... You can't get away from it. Thanks again for your help. Don't be a stranger. Oh. I won't. Promise. She was finally feeling better. I didn't want to ruin that. But it's so superficial, her feeling better. You're like not- It's almost like not letting her process Gabe's death. Especially since she actually did miss the um, wake as well. I just didn't have the heart to tell her. Mac. Here we go. Alex. Look, it's not a good time. You owe me an explanation about what happened to Gabe. I'm really sorry he died. And I appreciate that you... You didn't out me to Riley the other night, but I can't talk to you. Drop the act. I know you've been lying about that night. You don't know shit. You won't tell me shit. Mac, come on. He was my big brother. I can't. Something definitely has him scared. If I could just push him over the edge. In a non-friendly way. I got Riley to tell me about your plans to leave town. That's not something innocent people do. Oh God. It's not... I didn't do anything. <sighs> Fuck off! Leave me alone! I always want to feel bad for Mac, like I want to sympathize with him, but then he always ends up doing some crazy insane stuff. That just makes it so hard to um, really feel that way. I saw the way they looked at me at the wake. They all think I let him die. I know why you're lying. You wanted revenge for the fight. You were hoping he'd get hurt. That had nothing to do with it. You were jealous about Riley. You wanted Gabe out of the way. I didn't. You don't know what you're talking about. I know you didn't mean for Gabe to get hurt, but you screwed up and it's time to come clean. I'm not the reason he's dead. Typhon's forcing you to deny the call. Whatever you think you know. <sighs> you might not have been the reason he died, but you covering for their fuck up makes you guilty too. You don't get it. This wasn't some accident. I told them you were down there and they detonated anyway. On purpose? Why? I don't know. I swear. And then I get a message telling me to deny there was ever a call. You gotta believe me. Gabe and I, we didn't get along, but I, I didn't want him dead. And now, now Typhon's watching me. My girlfriend, she, she thinks I'm a murderer? My neighbors all hate me. I mean, what, what, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I think I can calm him down, but does he deserve it? 
I feel like if he thought about it logically, but he's he's very upset right now, which is why he's having trouble with it, but it, in no world would you cover up for the big company. They'll just use you and throw you away. Oh god, this is cruel, even for someone like Mac. You deserve everything you're getting. What? Maybe you didn't kill him. But you could have done something. You could have spoken up at the wake. Or told the police what really happened. And you didn't. I didn't have a choice. You always have a choice. <laughs> I hope this feeling crushes you. People have got to live authentically though, true to themselves. If you don't, it's so mentally tough. Like even if Mac lies today, he's gonna end up talking about it tomorrow. It's just not possible to keep all that bottled up. Oh jeez, I don't have a good feeling about Mac. We kind of did him dirty. He's awful, but what we did to him was kind of awful too. was my fault. My job is to keep people safe. And I failed. You did everything right. Typhon took him away from us. Not you. She's wrong. I let her cross that log. I put Gabe in harm's way. I'm not a hero. I'm a coward. Worse than worthless. I know what it's like to feel worthless and helpless. But we saved Ethan. And you saved me. It doesn't matter. Gabe's dead. Because of me. Gabe, I'm so sorry. forgive you. How could I not? <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> so... I guess I have this power. I can see other people's emotions. They show up like an aura, and if I get too close, I... I feel what they feel. As if I was feeling it myself. And when I focus, I can even understand why they're feeling it. And that's what you just did with... with me? Whew. Some kind of power. No kidding. It's... it's only ever been the bad emotions before. But that... that was pure joy. Who else knows? 
I've never told anyone until now. Hmm. And that's how I know Max terrified of Typhon. He reported Gabe's call, and they ignored it. Now they're putting pressure on him to toe the line. Okay, but why? I don't know yet. Someone made the decision to let the blast go off. Seems like finding out who would be a good start. So you're going after Typhon? You'll need help. You don't have to. You're stuck with me now. I know I did a hug last time already, so I should do a handshake, but this is the Ryan playthrough. This is such a... Even viewing it for the second time, I feel like it's such a um, natural flowing scene for... Alex and Ryan's relationship into developing into a more romantic one. I'm saying this again, even as someone who romanced Steph. The first time she experiences joy and the first time she tells anybody about her powers, it's the same person. It's Ryan. The one person who noticed that on the first day she was in town that she was not feeling well when Steph was angry and she was getting infected by that angriness. I guess. What is wrong with his hair in the scene? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. No. Thank you. You can kind of see this is where Ryan starts falling for her, too. Oh, that's cute. I love that song. Perfect song for Gabe's send-off. Well, Mac and Riley are still dating here, but it's not really... It doesn't really make that much of a difference so far. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to make more of a difference later on, but poor Mac. Oh god, he's probably having suicidal thoughts and all that. I feel bad even if it is Mac. And then Eleanor forgetting. Yeah, again, we're laying differences for the future, but it's not all immediately apparent yet, especially because I think it'll really all just culminate in the very, very last confrontation. <laughs> Everyone visited Charlotte. Well, that's good, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't clean up. Does that affect Alex, though? Does it make her sadder later on or more irritable? Maybe. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to look at the dartboard. That's pretty normal. I didn't even learn the name Alwyn this time. Alexandra. Okay. Oh, the least, least percentage. Ryan accepted Alex's forgiveness. Oh, because in order for that to happen, you have to forgive Ryan. You have to pick the specific dialogue that says, I forgive you. Most people chose to offer Gabe's forgiveness, even though we're not Gabe. I think originally I did the other one, right? So I guess I just really don't like the idea of not being the person and offering their forgiveness, even though realistically we do know that Gabe would definitely have forgiven Ryan. Yeah, hug. A hug. Foosball champion this time, yeah! Mm hmm. Sorry though, didn't help find the dog, didn't help find the bird. <laughs> Okay, next chapter. So, any sign of Diane today? Now that Max skipped town, she's our only lead left. Oh! No, but she was in yesterday Mac left. on her laptop. You said she was afraid of something around Gabe's death. If she's covering up what Typhon did, I bet there's proof. I hope so. If she comes in today, 
let's be ready with a plan. In the meantime, I've got to finish my shift. We're on it. Do we just never see Mac again? How do these birdwashing contests even work? Who's checking the sightings? Stop, nobody cheated. The people here respect the birders' code of honor as much as anyone. I just lost. Again. I'm sorry. I was so close. I just needed one more red-tailed hawk. There's always next year, right? Yeah, I guess. Fuck you, Ryan Lucan. Enjoy <laughs> your Birder of the Year title while it lasts. Ooh, shit. Ryan's got a rival. Sorry, lady. Ryan's my boy this time. I gotta sabotage you. <laughs> I wish Riley never found out about my condition. Oh. She needs to focus on her future, not mine. Riley found out? I wonder what this means for them. Oh, so it just happens off screen this time because I guess we left the flower shop with Eleanor not remembering Gabe. So when Riley comes, she sets the record straight. But then what's going to happen at the bus stop later then? Because she already knows. Hey, Eleanor. How are you? I'm doing okay. Thank you, dear. I really appreciate your help from a couple weeks ago. It means a lot to me. Of course. I'm glad I could help. Hey, is everything okay with you and Riley? For the most part. She's pushing herself too hard helping me. I just want her to focus on her own life now. Let me know what I can do. You've done so much already. I'm grateful, Alex. Well, we might not even get a bus stop scene because if Riley is so focused on Eleanor, then she's not going to want to leave her uh, college. Okay, she's here. What's the plan? Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I asked Diane out on a date. Wait, what? And she's so <laughs> into it. She doesn't notice one Ryan Lucan swiping her laptop. Ryan carries said laptop upstairs, acquiring damning evidence. Maybe Diane and I still hook up. Not important. <laughs> That's your plan? Oh my god, please tell me you have something better. <laughs> I do. Now to be clear, it's the same plan. Except, I'm the distraction. Look, Steph, I don't even <laughs> think she's gay, alright? She's probably into the rugged mountain man type. All the transplants are. <laughs> Alex's face. But in this case, you are Alex. You are into the rugged mountain man type. I'm genuinely worried that these were the best ideas you had. What? It's a simple plan. Literally two steps. You just need to choose the hotter distraction. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing that. You're the only tiebreaker we have. It's not just about who's hotter, though. Okay, if we think about it really practically, because you want to think about who's more sociable and who Diane would actually be into. But hey, uh, I'm curious to see. Diane's probably into everybody under the sun, then. <laughs> Let's go with Ryan. This Ryan? <laughs> this is like a bad dream. Sorry, Steph. Look. I appreciate the... the effort. But we don't even know if she has anything worth stealing yet. I'm just gonna try talking to her. Maybe I can get her worked up and read her emotions. I'll let you know if I need that distraction. Good luck. Your usual. Thanks, Alex. What's the best way to rile her up? Let's not be provocative this time. You know all I want is justice for my brother. Please. Help me.
Alex? I can assure you that Typhon is committed to a full and open investigation. We want to find those responsible and hold them accountable just as much as you do. That's the truth. She's very good at the PR speak. She's got a great poker face, unlike Mac. But let's see what she's really feeling. I should try reading Diane's emotions before we go any further. It's different this time. She's not angry. Poor Gabe. No one deserves to die like that. She's sad. If I keep her thinking about Gabe's death, maybe I can find out more. I bet you and Gabe threw back a lot of these together. He was a great bartender. Made the long work days more bearable. Mm. A month later and I can still feel the void he left behind. It's not like she hated Gabe, but you're not doing anything to help him get justice either. William Bloom. Gabe loved him. I think he spent a whole year just listening to him. <laughs> really? He had good taste. Surprised we never talked about it. Because I'm bullshitting you, that's why. <laughs> of all the people this could have happened to, why'd it have to be him? Are you joining in the LARP later? It's been so hard for Ethan. We're all hoping it will cheer him up. I can't. Good luck, though. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Okay. Now I need to pick something that will push Diane's emotions over the edge. He was practically a father to Ethan. And now he's gone. It's just so fucked up. N not fucked up enough for you to do something about it, though. Look, I know you're not a bad person. But my brother is dead because of the choices you and Typhon made. How does that make you feel? I actually want to know. Alex, I... We... Typhon is doing everything we can to address the situation. That's the truth. Okay? Alright, that's the emotion I was looking for. Time to explore Diane's guilt about Gabe. It's hard not to feel sorry for someone when you can see that they're genuinely feeling this emotion. But... My brother's dead, okay? I can't get him back. Now, is this the same? Because last time I did it, she was angry. Okay. Time to find out what Diane is really hiding. Hello? Miss Jacobs? It's Deputy Pike. Pike, I'm sorry, but we're very busy at the moment. There's been an accident. What kind of accident? He came here looking for a better life. Just like me. He's gone. I'm still here. Wait. There's something else. I can't undo what Typhon did. Or the role I played. But at least I have everything I need to protect myself from them. Holy shit. She must have evidence on the USB stick. Oh, looks like I'll need a distraction after all. Yeah! This should be easy, right? At least we won't have Diane questioning her sexuality. <laughs> but they're both a little young for Diane. I guess Diane's into the young ones. <laughs> Oh, 
Diane? Hey, Ryan. What's up? Well, if you're free later, I was thinking we could go on a hike together. <laughs> There's some beautiful trails up in the mountains. Oh, that sounds like a nice idea. Oh my god. <laughs> Alone in the mountains with this handsome fella? Sounds like a date. How long have you been planning this, you devil? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, to be honest, I've been wanting to ask you ever since you showed up in Haven. Truth be told. So, what do you say? Hey, no rush. He's not going anywhere. Mull it over. Get back to him. Anyway, gotta go. <laughs> See ya. You didn't even give her a chance to react, guys! She was immediately receptive, though, so I guess she was always into Ryan already. <laughs> Holy shit, that was epic! Totally insane! insane. My heart is pounding. <laughs> Ryan, real talk. I think Diane actually wants you. I know, I can't believe it! <laughs> Hey! Oh, man. Yeah, who would want you, Ryan? <laughs> I know I'm cracking up, but that was legit terrifying. I hope it was worth the risk. Mac. I wish it didn't have to be like this. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. Didn't matter what happened between me and Gabe. Mac? Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Don't fuck with Typhon. They're worse than you think. Where are you? Know where you need to know. Keep an eye on Riley for me. I will, but not for you. <gasps> you really just left then. I guess we're not going to see him anymore. From this point on, I remember we see him at the Spring Festival party, but then I guess he doesn't really do too much. But damn, early exit for Mac. He's just gone. Steph bought this for me as a gag, but I kind of developed a taste for it. Only if we lost, because otherwise, we wouldn't even know what it tastes like. Alright, we're starting the LARP. <laughs> okay. It's a wolf. A dire wolf. Shit, what do we do? I think we have to fight it. Since we tried to be pacifistic last time, maybe this time we'll truck our way through everybody. With pure power and strength. Oh, I must look like such a goofball. So much for being hot. Hot and goofball are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> At least in my book. Oh, this is different, I think. It's a little bit different. How do we know for sure it's dead? Should we tickle it? Stop it. Be serious. Sorry, Thanar. Sorry, Ryan. It was self-defense. Maybe because we flirted with him more this time. Oh, we picked him. We picked him for seducing Diane. So he's trying to, you know, appear hot and all that. <laughs> hey, this was angry before. Diane's thing. I just haven't slept. You know? Every time I close my eyes, my brain pulls up all these thoughts. These regrets. So I just lie there, crying and feeling like a horrible person. You mentioned regrets. Can you drill down on that? What is it that you regret? I don't know. I'm not sure of anything right now. The words are different, but the, the appointment slip memory is the same. All that guilt. And she still can't find her way toward doing the right thing. Oh, no, 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 it's different. It's not that Diane was keeping secrets. Not really. It's just that... What do you say? How do you communicate the complexity of your sorrow, your grief, your guilt? How do you put into words what it's like 
to know that your job is to explain away the death of a good man and keep the people who killed him safe. It's fucked up, and I'm sorry she's hurting, but how can she feel so hopelessly sad and still stand for Typhon? I can't imagine the kind of psychic math you need to do to justify that to yourself. In this case, I think Diane, if she gives Typhon out, she'll just lose her job or something, but in other cases, like what if she was being threatened or blackmailed, then that would be understandable why she wouldn't help, because she's got to look out for herself too, herself and her own family. Fellow survivors, I see. I see you've poured yourself some ale. I heard Barry the Tavern Keeper has a son, Ned, who's very observant. So, Barry's like a hundred years old? <laughs> Oh, she just doesn't say anything. He's probably thinking, curses Alex. <laughs> He's angry. Alex is right. But I was just trying to have a little fun. Gotta pace out that fun, Ducky. For your own good. Yeah, maybe it's not about the whole money thing, but more about you drinking this much, especially for someone your age. Probably not good for the health. Some kind of snake? I guess. No mercy for the river monster. Do we have to fight it? Why wouldn't we? Ah, uh, we have to flirt. Even though I'm kind of like. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cute, isn't it? And not goofy looking at all. Oh. What are you talking about? Oh, that's really sweet. Because Alex added that because he thought he was goofy earlier. Oh, but you know. <laughs> what do you want to do? Using her mind reading powers and all that. Calm it down. Hey, we're not here to hurt you. Oh well, it was worth a shot. You don't even go to sleep this time. I don't want to hear your animal facts. Huh. <clears throat> Two damage. <sighs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I have to talk to Riley about a real life thing. I promise I'll be quick. Sure. Take your time. So what's going on with Riley and Eleanor now then? Oh, okay, this is different. Riley's written down a lot of reminders for Eleanor. That one we've seen before, but not the list. She might still be deciding here. Hey there. Did Riley put this up? The last thing Eleanor wanted was everyone fussing over her. Beginning May 15th, Lathe Flowers will have reduced hours of operation due to a family health issue. We apologize for the inconvenience. Oh. Hmm. Nana's such a good person. She doesn't deserve any of this. And neither does Riley. Any luck with the USB? No, not yet. It's gonna take hours, if we're lucky. Oh. If you want to check it out, it's running on the office computer. But don't touch anything. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for doing this. You don't have to thank me. It's the least I could do for Gabe. And honestly, it's a nice distraction for me right now. Is something going on with Eleanor? I found out Nana has been sick. 
She has Alzheimer's. Oh. Wow. Anyway, let's talk about something else. Let's <laughs> talk about something else that's equally not as happy. Yeah, what are you going to do about school and Mac? Or, n not so much Mac. Are you still going to school? Oh, no. I turned them down. <gasps> Nana told me not to, but she's going to need help. This is so difficult. Even going back, like, I don't even know what the, the right choice is. On one hand, there's the whole expectation for privacy, especially medical privacy. If Eleanor doesn't want to tell Riley, then we shouldn't be the one to tell Riley. But at the same time, what is the reason why Eleanor doesn't want to tell Riley, though? It's not because she's worried about her medical confidentiality. It's because she's worried about Riley having to split her time between taking care of Eleanor and going to school. That's the main thing. So under that sort of lens, then I feel like that's a compelling reason to tell Riley about it. Because from Riley's perspective, she only has one Nana. She only has one Eleanor. School, you can do it later in life, but miss time, you can't get it back. That must have been a hard decision. No, I knew what I had to do. What's hard is dealing with the disappointment. Hmm, we know that Riley... Yeah, she's good with tech. She could have gone places. So... Mac left Haven. Where did he go? You know as much as I do. He's not answering any of my texts. <sighs> so it's effectively a breakup anyway. Let's talk later. I'll let you know if I make any progress. Thanks again. Maybe we'll see Riley at the festival then. Or maybe she'll be too sad to go. Hmm, poor Riley. Nana's such a good person. She doesn't deserve any of this. Those are new. I guess they're reminders. Yeah. And the list she was writing. Mmm. Eleanor must hate that she needs this. Reminders for Nana. Morning. Change water in cooler buckets. Mondays. Receive delivery from Roland's. Listen to phone messages. Do not erase. 8.30 a.m. Call with Riley to review today's orders. Flip sign open. Fill orders. Afternoon. Put new mail next to computer. Check on outdoor plants. Wipe down cooler. Close register. Flip sign the closed and lock up. Remember to rest. Maybe Eleanor would feel better if she wrote her own list, as opposed to Riley being like, Oh, Nana, here's a list for you because I'm so worried about you. And that's a way for her to take back some agency and control in the whole thing, too. I write lists for myself. I make plenty of alarm reminders, too. It's You just can't have the capacity to remember all that, Alzheimer's or not. Making lists is not an embarrassing thing, or at least it shouldn't be. So much to take care of. They must be exhausted. Oh, they're reduced hours. Seeing the doctor. Izzy, Sue's daughter can cover until 1 p.m. Physical therapy. Izzy, TBD, otherwise closed shop at 2. Mother's Day deliveries, Riley only. Mother's Day deliveries, Riley only. George from Smart Home Systems. Ah, oh, remote security and temperature system for shop, including coolers. Alzheimer's support group in Grand Junction. Doctor follow-up. Charlotte can cover until noon. Oh, power of attorney info session at Haven Library for Riley. Setting things up. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's important. If you only start setting it up when you need it, that's going to be too late. Jed will drive flowers over. Care coordinator. Riley's amazing, but yeah, maybe... I think Eleanor should be more involved in this, too. It'll make her feel better. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit! Troll! Incoming! 
He's got a soul jewel right there. Oh, oh, oh you like my belt? <laughs> it's made of human skin. <laughs> what do you think we should do? Kill it! This is Thanor, the monster slayer. Hand over the soul jewel if you value your life. I'll smash you to bits. Yeah, getting some of the fighting in. <clears throat> Four damage. <sighs> yeah. Woo. Yeah. Monsters beware your final hour. Thanor has found the sky sort of power. All right, here we go. Final battle. <laughs> oh, the design is a little bit different. It is, yeah. That sword now and the jewels. Cravius, Lord of the Underworld. I should have known King Tabor was you all along. You fools! You have collected the jewels I need and brought them right to me. You're wrong. The jewels are now part of the weapon that will slay you. Give them to me! Screw off. Oh, but are we entering the battle with minimal health? We don't get to heal between battles. Uh oh, we have to be careful here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, no. Maybe we should heal a little bit to begin with. Scroll of healing. Oh, this will always be badass. Fire blast. No! <laughs> we did it. I can't believe what just happened. <laughs> In hindsight, all that foreshadowing for Jed. I wasn't sure we were going to win the last fight. I was legitimately scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the best part was finding... Oh, Ethan. Kind of like earlier with Steph and the Foosball when I was talking about how you get distracted for a while and then you suddenly remember again. Listen to me. It wasn't your fault. At all. It wasn't. Okay? It wasn't. Charlotte. I hate my son, Alex. He's sweet, and he's creative, and he's the most important thing in the entire universe to me. And I hate him. For so long, it was just me and him. It took so long.
going to learn how to be okay with that. And I was. But then, Kate, I can deal with hating Ryan, or you, or even Gabe. But Ethan, if he had just listened, Gabe would still be alive. It all comes back to that. None of that makes you a bad mom. No matter what you're feeling, you always give Ethan what he needs. That's what matters. None of it fucking matters. He's dead. I wish I were too. This anger could kill her, and nothing I'm saying is helping. What if I could just take it away? So initially, I did pick to just leave Charlotte alone. And I have read that people picked up on that last line there of her saying, I wish I was dead. I can do it. I can take her anger from her. It didn't really register to me because I feel like, I guess, we say these what things. What would that do to her? What would it do to me? And even if I can, should I? And the way we say these things have kind of become normalized, especially as jokes and stuff, so it didn't really register too much to me. And when Alex said this anger could kill her, I was thinking about it from more of like a um, psychologically, like emotionally point of view, as opposed to Charlotte would literally kill herself. Yeah, I can definitely see why people would want to... If someone's mad, if someone's sad, why would you not want to help them if you have the power to? And also, we don't know too much about how this power works. Does it just take away her anger in this one instance? Or are you saying that she'll never feel anger again, ever, as an emotion? But then the other consideration we have here is now Alex has it. Alex? I'm okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Yes, I... I think so. Shit. Did I freak out on you? I'm sorry, Alex. I'm... Not sure what came over me. In the moment, it seems like not such a bad choice, I think. Yeah, because she's happier again. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, I think so. Just... Maybe I blacked out for a minute? I guess that's what happens when you don't sleep. Huh. I wrecked my sculpture. It seems so crazy in here, but I feel... How do I feel? Hmm, that's not such a great sign. Hey, go home. You're exhausted. I'm serious. It's okay. I'll see you tonight. Well, we'll see. It's normal to have these feelings, though. So, please tell me that the USB stick revealed all of Typhon's secrets. Not yet, but... Alex... We found a recording of Gabe's call. I need you to call off the explosion. Ethan's in the blast radius. Shit! He could get killed! 
killed. What the hell's wrong with you? He snuck off. We're, we're up here right now, trying to find him. Mac, please. All right, I'm on it. We'll hold the blasts. Fuck. You can't imagine the headaches this will create for me. Thanks, Mac. Whatever. Just doing my job. just ignored him. <laughs> That's so fucked. Do you know it's bad when Mac turns out to be the good guy? Alex, you okay? We're gonna get him. I promise. <laughs> Whoa! What the hell? Oh, it doesn't matter. None of it fucking matters! Dead! He's... Fuck that. I don't need to take this. I should follow her. We'll be right downstairs, all right? Yeah, because I remember in the options later on in the end of the chapter, there's one that says you piss them off. Stefan, Ryan. This is doubly awful though, because it's kind of like retreading what we did to Gabe on the very first day. Right now, all that matters is taking these fuckers down. This USB stick has what I need. Time mm. to dig through it. If that happened to me, what's happening to Charlotte? So even Alex recognizes that maybe normally she would be more calm, but not after that whole emotion taking thing. Yikes, that's um, not good, not good. That's the site of the 2008 Typhon mine collapse. Why would they set off a blast in their current mine to cover up a blast in their old mine? Didn't Typhon just have inspections around the old site? They weren't mining for anything. They were burying something. So we just end off the chapter without seeing Steph and Ryan again. I mean, that whole scene, Alex got angry, but Steph also sounded like she personally took offense to it. Okay, uh, to be clear, it's very unacceptable that she threw the bottle so close to Steph like that. But it, the words she was saying, she wasn't angry at Steph though, so I find that a bit interesting that Steph was like, whoa, no, I'm out of here. Instead of maybe being something more like, whoa, you know, calm down, girl, just... Well, actually, that wouldn't be quite right either because we're talking about my brother's death, but you know what I mean. Half and half, this is a difficult choice. Yeah, because... Uh, you have a power, and it's very tempting to help people to try to influence them, uh, try to go against what the so-called natural order of things should be. Now, most people made Diane sad, but this is my first time seeing it, actually. <laughs> I just left everything undone, all my dirty dishes. Everything should be the way it is. <gasps> oh, I never tried dying in the, the campaign, but... Oh my god, what would even happen at that point? That's awful. Yeah, that'd be pretty horrible. We killed the troll. We slay the serpent. Steph stormed out of the apartment. Half and half. Yeah, because it's the same half and half with Charlotte. This could be extra interesting if we were romancing Steph today. But we're not. But I just, I suppose there's some, some uh, apology scene later on. Kane Tabor. <laughs> why why does he never win? No. Wait, wait, wait. The second one just says vowed to return for his revenge. That sounds like he lost too. Oh, being killed versus just being defeated, I guess. Okay. Riley found out about Eleanor's dementia. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> 